I kid you not, I made this gun in 10 minutes using AI, and it only has about 7,000 tries. Now it doesn't look quite perfect, but you could manually fix most of the errors. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can combine multiple different types of AI software to create something like this for yourself. For the purposes of the video, I'm just going to make another gun, but you can probably make anything you want with this method. First off, you're going to want to head over to this AI art website called Photor. Once you're there, create a new account. You don't have to use your main email address. Actually, the email you use doesn't even have to exist. For some reason, the website thinks that fake email accounts are real, so you can just use whatever you want. Now click on AI Tools, and then go to Image Generator. And that's the beauty we've been looking for. Now, obviously you could just use Google to find the pictures that you need, but I just think it's cool to say that you really used AI to make the entire thing. But if you do want to use the AI Image Generator, you're going to want to try to generate pictures like this a clean 2D view of the model you want to make with detailed textures. Right here you can see I was just messing around with a couple different prompts, trying to get a 2D view of a gun, and eventually I got something I was pretty happy with. So obviously this method works really well for finding your picture, but I decided to use one from Google just for the purposes of the video because I thought it would be a lot more clean to work with. Now you're going to head over to monstermash.zone, the greatest website since Reddit. Just kidding. Once you're there, click on this little blue arrow, hit import template image, and add your picture. And da -na -na -na, the picture I found from Google. Now for this next part, you're going to want to zoom in a little bit on your browser. Uh, you'll see why in a minute. Now with the draw tool selected, you're going to want to trace over the individual parts of your picture. One important thing to know is that you never want the different lines of the components to overlap with each other. They should all be separate objects. It can be a little bit difficult to know which parts to separate, but one easy way to think about it is which parts would be easy to connect in Blender. Don't be afraid to spend some extra time on this part because we don't want these lines to look too wobbly. Once you're done, click the inflate tool at the top and you will see actual witchcraft occur before your eyes. Cool! Now click this drop down arrow and hit export the current animation frame. In Blender, hit file, import, obj, and locate your file. Nice! Now that it's in Blender, we can fix all the little errors. Also, the texture of my gun broke for some reason, but this shouldn't happen for you guys. To fix it, I just reprojected the gun from a 2D view onto the original image. It's a really easy way to fix broken textures, and you could even use it on models outside of this method. The trick is to line the entire mesh up with the original image. You might have to do a little bit of manual adjustment. Overall though, it ended up looking just just like the original AI model. Ah, wonderful! Now tab into edit mode, press A, right click, and hit separate by loose parts. Now every part of the gun is a different mesh. Now we're going to use proportional editing to fix the general chunkiness of the gun. If you don't know how proportional editing works, let me explain it real quick. So this is what it looks like to move a face without proportional editing, and this is what it looks like to move a face with proportional editing. Pretty cool! You can adjust the intensity of it with your mouse wheel. It's great for flattening surfaces, which is why we're going to use it on the gun. From here I just scaled in the different parts of the gun with proportional editing, and I reprojected any faces that didn't have the right texture. For this part, you really have to use your own best judgment. If a face has the wrong texture, move it to an area on the UV with the right texture. If a part of the mesh looks too thick or thin, fix it with proportional editing. You have a ton of freedom for this part, so just do whatever you think is going to make the model look the best. Here I spent about maybe 10 minutes just going around the mesh, fixing any broken faces, fixing areas of the gun that were too wide or too skinny, and overall just making it look a lot more visually appealing. Just like the drawing process, don't be afraid to spend some extra time on this part. And now the trigger guard. I'm going to be adding in two cubes for this. The first one is going to be the trigger, and the second one is going to be the area for the trigger guard. To do this, I'm just going to be tracing the cubes over the reference image. You don't have to spend a crazy amount of time on the tracing process. I overdid it a little bit in this demonstration. But for the most part, this is the only part of the whole gun that we have to manually model, because I personally think that it's much easier to do this part by yourself than to try to generate it with AI. Once they look good, use the trigger guard cube as an object of the boolean modifier for the main gun. To fix these interfaces, I gave textures to all the ones that were looking super weird, and I just moved around the jaggedy edges until they looked pretty straight. Now extrude the trigger out, place it in the very center of the trigger guard, and give it a texture. You can just line it up against any metallic part of the gun, it really doesn't matter. For me, I just gave it the same texture as the rest of the gun, and I lined it up over this one kind of random part of the magazine, but it ended up looking pretty cool. During this whole process, if any part of your model gets really messed up, you can fix it with a remesh modifier. The remesh modifier essentially reconstructs your mesh with better topology and smoothness. You do have to reapply the textures to any parts of the model that you remesh, but it it's not that big of a deal. After I remeshed a few parts of the gun, I just fixed the last couple of proportions and 
brought all the different pieces together. Even though this process seems complicated, the whole thing only took me about 15 minutes. If you add the time of creating the AI model, you can make an entire model like this in only about 20 minutes. And honestly, for AI generation, this looks pretty good. If I had put more time into it, I probably could have made it look even better. AI is going to revolutionize 3D modeling. Just be sure AI never gets too powerful. It could become very dangerous.